discard everything in your head. Empty this. How like can this. you empty that? How can you empty that after all this weekend, looking forward to watch Israel? Where? What? Where? What? Israel? Where's that? It's not in Europe. Hello! Hiya! I'm Toy. I'm Goy. And welcome to another episode to The Road to Tel Aviv. This is a very special one today. You know what you need to say to the viewers? Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom. Manishma. <laughs> ah, top, top. Shalom Europe, shalom Israel. Today we are going to react to Israel starting now. So I was looking forward so much to hear my incorrect facts. Maybe incorrect facts. Yeah. Now, I tried to find some things that I hope you're not aware of or that might surprise you. Israel has a population of 8.7 million. Mm -hmm. As we know, not many people there. Nahon. Nahon. <laughs> the largest known dog cemetery in the ancient world was unearthed in Ashkelon. Did you know that? No, what? <laughs> Load of dead dogs. That one. You might know this, I found this quite interesting. Israeli banknotes have braille on them. Yes. I like that a lot. Israeli cows produce more milk than any other cows in the world. <laughs> what? <laughs> How did that happen? Out. They've got very, very luscious teeth. Um, it is one of only two countries to begin the 21st century with a net gain of trees. Why? Because there are so many fires during the year. <laughs> they have to recover, <laughs> so they keep planting new trees. Yeah, sorry, Ken. This one's interesting, and because it shocked me, but now thinking back with my knowledge of Israel, it now makes sense. So, the producer of Power Rangers, aka My Childhood, was Israeli. I used to read his name as a kid because I didn't know anything about Israel as Haim Saban. Now I'm like, no. oh, his name is Haim. His name's Haim. Haim he's a bloody Saban. Israeli who made my childhood. Uh, per square kilometer, Israel has the highest rate of bird traffic, with 500 million birds traveling through Israel every year. <laughs> are you talking about real birds or are you talking about some Women. kind of. No, no. Are you talking about some kind of Mossad uh, codes? <laughs> oh! <laughs> And lastly, <laughs> people who keep the Shabbat can buy car insurance that doesn't cover Saturdays and therefore is cheaper. <laughs> That's correct though. Which is weird because you could just lie. You it can... said do not lie in the Ten Commandments, <laughs> come on. Those were my maybe incorrect facts. Thank How you. many of those did you know? Some of them I did know, Some like the, but the Ashkelon one, what the hell? Dog cemetery. Guys, if you knew about it and it's correct, please let us know in the comments below because I didn't know about that, but that's brilliant. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Now. Oh, now. Israel in Eurovision. So Israel joined to Eurovision in 1973. Mm -hmm. They qualified. Yes. Eight out of the 15 finals. Mm -hmm. So it's just above. 50%? Yeah. Not amazing uh, ratio. Some songs have been quite rubbish, sorry. Yeah, they were. Just, <laughs> they were. Come on, let's face it, they were. <laughs> and they won for four times. So they won in 1978 with Isa Coin and the Alphabet with the song Abanebia Boy Bet. A year after, um, they won with Milk and Honey, and we are not talking about the same honey with the, the bees. <laughs> the bees from Slovenia. <laughs> Milk and honey with the song Hallelujah. Milk, because they produce so much milk from their very, very viscous crap, not viscous, very virile cows. And 1998, Dana International brought us <laughs> Diva. Which, bonus fact, Isaac sang a karaoke in the bar we met on the first night we met. And you stick with me? <laughs> What's going on with you? Hey. Last year, 2018. Did they win? This is what happened, <laughs> thanks to Netta Toy, which was, I think, so amazing uh, win, not in terms of the points, but in terms of what the media fed us Israeli in the last 20 years from the last winning of Dana International. It's all about Europe doesn't like us, nobody votes for us, blah, 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 blah. And after we won, and I don't know if you by any chance watch my very calm reaction. Dude, it, yeah, was yeah, it, controlled. Was, it, was, it was controlled. And after that win, I kind of realized that it's all wrong. So everybody out there that think that people are not voting for its country because this is the country and nobody likes us, this is totally crap. It's crap, sorry, I'm, I'm saying it out loud. If you send a song that makes people at home feel something, Neta won 
not by large margin, but NECA won the competition, it means that every country that sends a song to Eurovision, even the UK, even wow. the UK, because we have this discussion wow. as well, even the UK can win the Eurovision. And that's the message I'm sending to all of you viewers around Europe and Australia. <sighs> but this year, this year, this year, this year we have a bit of a problem because every other song we have reacted to blindly with no knowledge of the song or the singers. Yes. We can't do that this time. Because we followed pre-selection show in Israel very, very closely. We fell in love with Kobe Marimi. We promoted him and as, as much as we could by doing those videos. He won the competition in such a high margin mm -hmm. compared to the previous years. We were so happy that Kobe Marimi is the one that's representing Israel. However, coming to this reaction now, we are not very clean. <laughs> we are, we're not just dirty. We're smeared with Kobe. So, in order to get the real reaction, we invited... Oh! Hello! It's Joy! Hi. Um, What's that? What's that in your head? Well, okay, so talking... The, the lads are saying how they're smeared in Kobe. Um, this picture <laughs> hangs in their dining area. <laughs> Um, from a decorative row uh, in the ceiling, and I, yes, it's, it's most hilarious. So, have you seen any of Kobe Marimi's songs? Have you heard? I think it's been on maybe once in the background when I've been here. So you didn't really put no any... No. Um, I am unsmeared. I am clean. <laughs> uh, I am... It's always a first time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm practically a virgin when it comes to Kobe. <laughs> And um, yeah. I'm about to have the full Kobe experience. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I will be able to give you my honest opinion. I, uh, as ever, we don't wish to offend anybody. Or but objectify, or no, insult, exactly. or demean. But I have to say, you know, it, this can be humorous as well. So if it's a bit toshy. Oh. Why? <laughs> So, are you guys ready? I am ready. No. I'm, I'm stressed, if I'm really honest, because we're waiting for this song for a while. The bar is... The bar is so high. And you're emotionally invested in and him. And they are emotionally, emotionally invested in and, him. And again, we are honest, and if you don't like the song, we will share it with you. We won't sell something that we don't feel. But, let's, go, let's watch. Kobe Marimi. Here we go. Home, Israel, Eurovision 2019, starting now. Some obvious investment on the on the ignore panel. this wall. <laughs> it's it's hard. Oh well, my god, I can't say wall in the Israeli version. Oh, so, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, all right. So the lyrics are a bit cheesy. Um, <laughs> I am gonna say that. Okay. Beautiful vocals. Okay. Mm. Really, really stunning vocals. Interesting, I think, that there is an Arabic kind of Middle Eastern kind of sound to it, which I quite like, especially to his vocals. And I think that's quite nice, actually, to hear from an Israeli entry, if I'm honest. And obviously, it's a very moody, black and white clip. It's this very... clip is stunning. It's really stunning. So, I just... I hope it's not a schmaltzy ballad too much, if you get me. 
probably tears, but let's watch. Let's, let's see. Let's, let's see. see. But I'll... there'll be more tears. Yeah. <laughs> I used to listen to the way they talk. I love the Queen imagery. <laughs> Counting down the minutes from the ticking clock, and I am someone. Tears from both of you. I can see why. Oh. I can see why that would make you emotional, given how much you've talked about Kobe and how you followed his journey. What did you think? Are you able to... <laughs> I need to get the emotional stuff out of the way first. It's because we followed him from day one. Mm -hmm. And seeing that journey... Yeah. To this point, from that guy that we watched. From the, f the, the shorts <laughs> and, the, and the, the ridiculous <laughs> outfit he came for the first audition. Sorry, Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your mum what to wear next. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with the song, as this journey we went on with him, it's amazing. Those lyrics connect to that thing that we have, mm. that idea of that journey we went on. But mm. those lyrics, I'm coming home, it's like, the, it's, it, it touches in every person in a different way. Home for every person is... It's a very nice, especially towards the end of the song, when it really, he really it is, built it, it up. Is, it is. The chorus at that point, for me, started to make sense. But at the beginning of the song, mm -hmm. it felt a bit flat and it felt like it could have been boring. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it, it kind of picks up halfway through. I don't know what you guys think, you can let us know, but it just kind of goes, whoosh! I don't think it will win, but I do think that it will do really well. And I think that on the night, he's gonna perform it from what I understand, if he can sing like that. He's gonna perform it can. beautifully. The problem with this year, there are so many male singers and there mm. are so many ballads. Seeing the yeah. Netherlands yesterday, it was yeah. stunning. It right. was a different level of emotions. Now, we know Kobe, we've seen him live. He can deliver amazing vocal. The question is, if a ballad is going to win Eurovision, which one of the ballads mm. will touch more people? And I think the fact that you picked up straight away that words are a bit cheesy, compared to the Netherlands words, which are amazing, yeah. I think, they are so clever, will be a very, very tough call here. They also show a huge amount of proud, a pride for where he comes from. Yeah. Very subtle subtext about oh, actually nice. No, but I know what you mean. My country, Israel, which is so looked down upon, M is beautiful. Maybe, yeah, you could definitely get that from it. And there's some references there that perhaps, because it says the sun on yeah. his skin, yeah. you wouldn't sing that about the UK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you compare that song to the, to, like, when you think about the UK, in yeah. that terms, there was a song, It's Coming Home. <laughs> hey, come <laughs> on, the, I liked the beginning, the instrumentation, that piano in the first few lines, when it went silent. I liked that a lot. There was like the bit playing right. with the rhythm. And then okay. in the second verse, when all the backing vocals came in, they were yeah. all him, which sounded stunning, but also made me think, nod to Netta, who sang a song made pretty much entirely of her own voice. So, and let's not forget that when he came on that first audition, he did say that Netta winning the Eurovision and Netta saying about be who you are and what you are, uh, that's what made him finally come to an audition because he feels it's different, because he feels that the way he sings, the way he, uh, he, he produces his voices 
are different and not everyone a cup of tea, you know. And I think it showcased how he sings perfectly. And the way they arranged it as well at the end, the instrumentation was fantastic. I'm not disappointed at all. As every song in Eurovision, some we like, song will dislike mm -hmm. it's absolutely fine if the song you watch made you feel something made you feel good made yeah. you feel you know uplifting it's a good song this song made me those emotions and i'm so happy and i'm grateful that we had this opportunity and thank you Tsvika for mm -hmm. letting us know about him after his first edition. And come on, let's let, let's be honest here, yeah? Does Israel really want to win second time in a row? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. He has a different job to do. And in the last few years, there was a jinx of the host country. And the uh, last three years, I think, the host country finished last. The songs oh, were all... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the right, jinx but... he needs to beat is not finished last. Well, we've heard the UK songs, so it's not gonna happen. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any <coughs> reason why this song will finish last. I don't know why it's going it's to finish. Not, that is not it's... gonna finish last. That is not gonna finish last. It's not gonna finish first, but it is not gonna finish last. And it becomes really quite stunning at the end. Yeah. The funny thing that you said about really enjoying the beginning was the bit I didn't like about it the most. Okay. So I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. But that shows how people have different tastes. Some people aren't looking for ballads in Eurovision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people are looking for those thumping kind of mm -hmm. dancey mm -hmm. numbers like Fuego and whatever, whatever. And some of our favorite ever Eurovision tracks are the ballads. Please let us know in the comments below what you thought about uh, Kobe's entry israel entry for 2019 now we always do this selection at the end where we have the previous selection compared to the new uh, reaction we are doing Not unfortunately today. we cannot do it today it because wouldn't be fair. we didn't come to this uh, uh, song clean at the end of the journey we will be able to pick something from the from the you know for the remaining song that we didn't pick at the beginning maybe we will pick israel if you like this video please thumbs up Please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't done so. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, send Joy a message if you liked his cameo again today. And we got a lot, a lot, a lot of comments asking us about the second episode of Israel oh, yes. Candy. It's coming home. Hey! See you guys soon. Bye! Really sweaty. Excited? Oh, I didn't put any deodorant on because it's burning my armpits again. Uh, just use the Sanex And we have one. no roll on. Just use cupboard. the one that I use. It's a slight feminine smell, but you're alright. <laughs> um, <laughs> football's not going to come home for the next hundred years, guys. But your vision, mate. Well, it yeah. might do... It would depend on how terrible Brexit is. Well, <laughs> you need to wish for Australia victory because yeah. if Australia wins, there is a high chance that it will be host in the UK. Any bets they choose Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> um, but don't bees. see... Bees. Bees. I don't see... Kobe's. <laughs> Knowing Joy, beautiful Joy, I know that he will probably uh, change his mind about well, Cyprus. Well, I'm, I'm malleable, because well, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> malleable, just... What did this mold? Malleable, yeah. just you know, just uh, you can change its shape. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about your finger making. In the I'm not believing. <laughs>